uh, let me introduce Dr. Kanan first, uh, so that uh, uh, so that we can learn what he's going to talk about. So, Dr. Kanan is an entrepreneur and a physician scientist and also a computational biologist and we have been uh, fortunate enough to have several of these discussions with Dr. Kanan and learned so much about translational cancer research and its application in India and I think it's a great opportunity for the audience and for everyone who is here today to learn from his and his experience where his focus of work was cancer genomics and on, on utilizing different sequencing platforms for immuno-oncology for drug discovery and development that led to uh, cancer immunotherapy and developing those uh, uh, protocols for cancer immunotherapy. And uh, there are so many different keywords that are associated with what is going on with the uh, uh, with precision oncology and all of that so it's it's really we are very excited to learn by by you dr shibikan chakraborty and anything anywhere anyone getting ready for the future of genomics over to you sir yeah thank you <clears throat> can you guys see my screen <clears throat> Yes, yes. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mohit, for the wonderful introduction. So basically, anything, anyone, anywhere is basically from Nanopore's official website. So you can see here. So let me go to the beginning. Uh, I also have a presentation. So I wanted this to be a more interactive session. I don't want to bore the people, <laughs> you know. So if you are an NGS, next generation sequencing, whether you are on the wet lab side or on the bioinformatics side, uh, when people say NGS, what do you think about? You always think about Illumina and uh, iron torrent and other short read technologies, but the world is changing. The world of genomics is changing uh, at a very fast pace. So we started adopting nanopore technology around 2017, 2018, when the technology was still at a very early stage. And a lot of people used to say, oh, nanopore is not good. It's only for research. It doesn't have, the accuracy does not meet the level of accuracy of Illumina, but that's not true anymore. So it's a fast evolving and a fast developing technology. Uh, maybe I'll make the screen a little bit bigger so that you guys can see. Yeah. <clears throat> so I want to give some a taste of what's what's coming in the near future. So and I'm not I'm not alone. Uh, I am part of a huge community of nanopore users. More than thirty thousand laboratories across the world have adopted nanopore primarily for studying microbiome uh, bacteria, yeast, fungi, virus. And uh, very recently during the COVID pandemic, uh, Nanopore came as a very big uh, solution uh, to for real-time genomic surveillance of how the COVID virus is mutating very fast and spreading all over the uh, world. And uh, all the countries started using. Uh, so the adoption, real adoption of Nanopore technology happened during the pandemic. So that's something uh, Illumina could not have done that. Uh, because of it's a it's a capex heavy equipment, you have, you need to invest millions of dollars to have an NGS facility. But Nanopore is like they have different small small instruments to big instruments. So here they show. Uh, let me just scroll a little bit. <clears throat> so here you can see the range starting from a flongal or smidgeon all the way to the minions, the gridion, and then we have the prometheon. So they have the the complete range. And Nanopore is one technology. Uh, you don't, you don't, you're not tied to the lab, so you can literally take it in wherever you go. So people have done it, uh, even done sequencing in a space, in a in a space station, and they've done in remote corners of the world. You know, so there's a lot of information available on the website. So, as a broad spectrum, uh, what, what is the main use of this technology? Uh, just like any other NGS technology, it has a very uh, multiple use cases. Most common, uh, how Nanopore became very popular is metagenomics, uh, especially when you have they have this what's what's in my pot analysis. I give you a tube. I go to collect some environmental samples or some bacterial samples or some. I take a sample from poultry farm or I go to Himalayas and take a sample of the water. Right. So what's in my pot? Can you tell me what's inside the uh, tube? Uh, the colorless liquids. So that's the metagenomics is the most important and uh, most popular use case. And then of course there's agrigenomics. And then because of the long reads, uh, you're able to have uh, N50 the context. We have like we are not, we are not limited by the lens. Whereas in Illumina, there's always a size limit, it's like 153 in a base pairs. So here there's no limit. So you can have very, very long reads. We have seen in our lab minimum of 1.5 kb to 40 kb fragments with very good overlaps. So it becomes very easy when you want to uh, do a de novo sequencing and align and map the genome. 
And of course, the most common use case is the studying the bacteria, the virus. And now recently, a lot of work is being done on human, human genome. That's where we come in. So we primarily focus on uh, cancer diagnostics. And we do uh, something called a comprehensive genomic profiling in our lab. So we also look at the tissue biopsy and we also do the liquid biopsy. So nanopore technology has been used uh, since the beginning in our lab. Earlier, we used to uh, do some comparisons with Illumina data and iron torrent data. But now the accuracy has improved a lot. So we no longer do this orthogonal validations. We just go direct with nanopore because we are confident we are able to find the mutations very easily. There are several unique advantages with nanopore. Of course, you can see there are so many long read technologies. There is Pact Bio and so many other guys like HiC, BioNano. Almost every week we see a new company pops up, right? So we have singular genomics and so many new companies coming into the space. It's very popular. And then we have the, the MGA, which is a clone of Illumina, but they do it in a different way. And they do have some uh, unique advantages. It's more affordable compared to Illumina. Uh, but generally, the entire NGS world is separated into short read technologies and long read technologies. Among the long read technologies, Pact Bio and Nanopore are the leaders. Unfortunately, pack is too expensive. So the per sample cost is as high as $300. Uh, sometimes if you want 100 GB of coverage, it's more than $3,000. For a small laboratory like us and most developing countries, uh, this pricing is not affordable. Unless you are a university project, you have some grant money, right? Uh, so for clinical use, it's not making sense. Uh, so we have been very happy with Nanopo. Uh, the per GB cost is as low as $30. $30. So it's not Back when it was $300, here is $30. So it's literally uh, one is to 10 kind of ratio. So I don't think anybody can beat Nanopore on the, on the pricing side. The other major important advantage in Nanopore is uh, it's a real, real-time sequencing. So in Illumina, it's like a one-week-long pipeline, both the wet lab and bioinformatics. Three days for the wet lab minimum, and another two, three days for the bioinformatics. So if I get a sample on a Monday, I can give a report on a Friday or a Saturday. Sometimes, you know, some holidays comes, or something happens, some delays happen. Sometimes it may take longer than a week, uh, seven to 10 days. That's why most NGS laboratories and genomic service providers, they don't give a turnaround time less than three weeks. They give typically three to four weeks. But in Nanopore, I can do it the same day. I start from the morning, do the DNA RNA isolation, do the library prep in the afternoon. By evening, I can load the sample. So this is this picture, you can see the, the Minion device, which is a most affordable device. Anybody interested in genomics, they can start buying this. The instrument comes free of cost. You're basically paying for the flow cells of the reagents. Uh, the startup cost is only like $5,000. It's very, 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 very low, low economy. Uh, anybody can start doing SQL. Let's say anything, anywhere, and anyone. You don't have to be an NGS expert. And uh, it's kind of, you know, the kids comes with excellent protocols, uh, both on the wet lab side, also on the bioinformatics side. They do provide a software, online cloud-based software for the data analysis. Especially if you're doing metagenomics projects, it's one of the easiest to start. Start with the rapid barcoding kit, and you can start doing metagenomics in the lab every day. Uh, it's very easy to adopt. So we have made a mission uh, to help everybody to adopt nanopore technologies, free of cost, right? So if you are interested, call me. I will help you set up the lab. I will help you with onboarding. You know, so we uh, we have a team of people who can support you. So we don't want anything in return. We just, we just want people to start using nanopore technology. Forget Illumina. Those are the dinosaurs of the past, right? Let's move on to the future. You know, that's why I said getting ready for the future of genomics. The way we see it, the next 10 years, <clears throat> long read technologies are here to stay. And more and more competition comes, and the price is going to come down. And it could be as low as $9 per GB. Uh, so in NGS, you always go with a per GB cost. Right? So that's it's making a lot of economical sense especially for emerging markets like India, Africa, South America, Asia, Pacific, you know, every, every, everywhere, you know, you can do it. And uh, again, the time taken is just 24 hours to 48 hours. Uh, maximum you can do, you can completely max out the flow cell in 72 hours. So that's a huge advantage in Nanopore. The unreal time, as soon as the data is being captured, it's uploaded to the server and you can continuously monitor the data. Within six hours, for example, COVID virus, uh, we can do it in within six hours. We can actually tell you what variant it is. So they have a very nice protocol. Of course, you'll have data in the first 13 minutes itself, but we wait for four to six hours to get some confidence on the variant. Is it a Delta variant or Omicron? Even if it's an Omicron, what's a sub variant? So we can do all that. So we have a NABL lab. We do COVID testing also. And uh, we also do the for research purposes under ICMR guidelines. We also look for variants because we have a mRNA vaccine project uh, where we use nanopore extensively. So Without Nanopore, I don't know 
can we even do this kind of work you know so uh, kind of the time the time turn around time and the time it takes to develop the data uh, so it's a very simple uh, prepare your samples then sequence and analyze so it's three step process you know uh, let me quickly walk you through uh, the three main products so you can see minion uh, it's starting from $1000 you know so it's a starter packs actually $5000 when you add the kits and the agents and you can see Gridayan starting from 50k and the Promethean, they have two, two kind of offers. It's actually a 2TK instrument, but you can go for the P2, uh, which is more affordable. So if you are a university lab or a commercial lab and you want best of both worlds, there's a difference between the Menayan flow cells and the Promethean flow cells. So I would recommend go with a Gridayan. So Gridayan gives you five flow cells and the P2. So you have two Prometheans. So you will have the flexibility of using both Menayan process and the Promethean process, depending on what type of data your customer wants, right? So, and here you can see in the, in the product specifications, what can we do with Nanopore? Everything you can do in Illumina, you can do with Nanopore. <laughs> it's not like, you know, only Illumina is good at uh, SNPs and genotyping. We can do SNP detection in Nanopore. In fact, it's, it's a lot better. Uh, homopolymer detection is also very high. And uh, recently people have done benchmarking studies, that in nature publications, many publications. Illumina versus Nanopore versus PacBio, they have done the neck-to-neck -neck comparisons with known samples and Nanopore has come out as a clear winner. Uh, there's, a, there's a page, I've not opened that. Uh, there's a page that talks about the accuracy and uh, base level accuracy and also at the genome level and the chromosome level accuracies. And Nanopore always comes at a huge winner and at a very affordable cost. So this is like a, like a superior technology at a more affordable cost. Another big advantage in Nanopore is the methylation. So no other technology gives you the advantage of both genetics and epigenetics on the same run, on the same experiment. Imagine if I have to do Illumina uh, NGS, I have to, for example, Illumina is a company called Grail. Uh, they have done liquid biopsy for uh, multi-cancer early detection. They have to do, they have to split the DNA sample into two vials. One vial goes for normal uh, variant calling pipeline DNA mutations. Another vial goes for the epigenetics, the bisulfide sequencing. So they have to split it. Now, what is the ratio, the proportions? Did you split it exactly equally 50 50? Right? So the sampling bias comes in the picture. But in Nanopore, you don't have split it. The entire sample runs run through the same native barcoding protocol. And you get uh, this raw data. The raw data can be analyzed in two different pipelines. So splitting happens at the bioinformatics level, not at the wet lab level. So, the, so there is no sampling bias. The same sample you get base modification, especially the methylation. So that is the uh, one of the main reasons many people are now switching over from Illumina, from bisulfate sequencing, the switching over to Nanopore is because of the methylation detection. And another huge advantage, especially for cancer research, we not only look for small mutations, we look for big mutations, the anything more than 50 base pair called the structural variance, SV detection, and also haplotype facing. So this is something not many people know this, uh, people report EGFR mutations, for example, the cis and trans. So it depends on, let's say I have two types of mutations, uh, the LA58 or sensitivity crossing mutation, or T719DM, which is a resistance crossing mutation. If these two mutations come on the same strand of the DNA, then the resistance biomarker overtakes the sensitivity biomarker. But if they come on the opposite strands, then the patient is still sensitive to TKA. So this has some direct implications in tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Uh, so we call this company in diagnostics, like drugs like erlotinib, gefitinib, and all these TKIs, tyrosine kinase inhibitors, which target the EGFR, KRAS, or BRAF. Very important to know the cis and trans. How can we do that? You have to do haplotype facing. You have to know if my cluster of mutations, are they coming on the same strand of DNA, or are they coming at the opposite strands of DNA? So haplotype facing is coming up in a big way in cancer research. And another hot area is the transplantation medicine. So where you have to do HLA typing. If you're going for a bone marrow transplantation, so cancer patients, leukemia, lymphoma, so many patients, they go for BMD, also hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. So typically they go with uh, relatives, some uh, matched donors. Sometimes today donors are very difficult to get. Uh, you don't have siblings, you don't have any family members to give you bone marrow. Then you go for matched unrelated donors, MUD. In a MUD uh, case, which is more common nowadays, what we do is something called a haploidentical. That means... 100% uh, is not a match, but 50% match, but the 50% match is on the same strand of DNA, so haploidentical. Uh, so recently there was a nature publication where they showed there are 21 doppelgangers for every, every person walking on this planet Earth, 
21 people in this planet who are exactly like you. <laughs> they also look like you. They also have a similar genome, you know, the facial features and everything. So it's very interesting paper. So finding an unrelated unmatched donor at the haploidentical is becoming more and more easier nowadays. So this has truly revolutionized uh, transplantation medicine. That's where HLA typing uh, and the entire HLA alleles, the MHC class 1, class 2 loci, very easy to do on the Nanopur platform. And again, in agri-genomics and plant genomics, wherever you're working on a new species, you don't have a reference genome. And now we have the pan, pan human genome, pan genome project. And we also have the R.1 and so many other projects. So assemblies, de novo assembly, right? So this is the, the key. So highly recommend, uh, go to the Nanapur website, nanapurtech.com and click on the resource center on the resources. So here you will find all the latest uh, videos and stuff. And uh, let me quickly walk you through the community. So you, anybody can have a free account. And here you can see I'm in logged in, I'm in the dashboard. And you can see there's a huge community, active discussions are going on. Also, you have uh, all the new releases, software downloads, and you can check the protocols. You know, it's very easy to getting started with Nanopore. You know, you, can, you have all the protocols here and for different, different kids, it's very easy. Uh, it's a lot more simpler than Illumina. If you're coming from Illumina, it will be a delightful experience uh, working with Nanopore. And they have different protocols, for example, extraction protocols. Are you starting from DNA? Are you starting from RNA? What is your material? Like they make it very easy. You know, there's also a protocol builder, which can basically walk you through the different uh, sample types and what type of validations you want to do. So you can see tissue, cell culture, fluids, whole organism, agarose blood, environmental, FFPs, you're not limit, there's no limit, any sample type. And then depending on the organism, so they have different protocols. They want one for mammalian, one for plant like that. So pick the protocol that you need and follow that to the line, don't change anything. It is guaranteed to work, you know, that much I can, I can uh, tell you. Uh, I'll just quickly sh show you this video. <clears throat> So uh, let me go a little bit back. So here, so this is the flow cell. <clears throat> okay, so you see this small area here. Uh, this is where we drop the sample. So it's very simple. And uh, and we just there's a small. We have to open that spot on that uh, lid, and then put drop, 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 and then it goes inside. So it's basically like a electrophoretic chamber. So there is an upper chamber and lower chamber. And then there's an ASIC chip on which the nanopores are being embedded. It's basically a protein nanopore. And once the DNA goes inside, it's basically threaded, threading through the nanopore. So then the ASICs are reading the electrical signals, which the software will interpret. That's where the base calling comes. So this is where real-time base calling can happen. So you can monitor the, the data in real time. And once you exhaust the DNA in the top, you can basically stop it. <laughs> And this is as part of the library prep, this is what you're doing. So this is your DNA sample. And what you're doing is basically you're attaching this motor protein on the adapter sequence. And here you can see these are, these are the ASICs chambers. These round things are the membranes on which the nanopores are uh, embedded. So there's a 2048 membrane wells each containing at least one. Sometimes it may contain more than one, uh, but typically now the, the optimization has happened a lot. You'll only find one nanopore per, uh, sometimes the nanopore is not fully fully formed, maybe it's broken. Uh, you do find a few channels. By the time you receive a few channels, the protein has denatured or it has folded, it's not working. Uh, but majority of them, 70, 80 percent, they still work. So even though you're guaranteed 2048 pores, by the time you receive it during the shipping and logistics, you may not get 2048. So they say uh, minimum 1500 or 1700 is kind of covered under warranty. If it is lower than that, then they will replace, they'll give you a brand new flow set, you know? So, uh, so you, nobody gets 100% capacity. That's something that you need to consider, you know? Yeah. Okay, so this is the important step. So you can see this tether is going to catch this, right? Okay, so 
this is how it works. So basically, when the DNA is being threaded, there is a disruption in the ionic current, which is detected. Uh, earlier, I used to think it is threading one base at a time, but that's not correct. It's actually threading four to five bases at a time. And different posts have different uh, uh, speed limits. And depending on the speed, the faster it goes, the lesser the accuracy. The slower it goes, the higher the accuracy. So it all depends on you want uh, um, uh, a structural variance, a bigger. I don't. I'm not caring about SNPs or single nucleotides. I only look at large things. Then you can go faster. But if you're doing variant detection, you are looking at uh, single nucleotide base level things. Then you have to go slower. Okay, so I think you've got the picture. So let me open uh, the presentation. Uh, I'll just quickly show you. Uh, so why we call it as the, the future <clears throat> of genomics, right? Uh, so uh, Illumina has been there for a long time. Illumina and other guys, Ion Torrent, they haven't done much innovations. The, it's the same technology they had 20 years ago. They still keep selling the same things again and again. But Nanopore comes up with a lot of new information almost every year. So they have this huge conference called London Calling every year. So this is, these slides are taken from their uh, plenary uh, lectures uh, from the London Calling 2022. I'll just pick some important slides in that. Uh, so the first is, you know, you, look, you can look at the evolution of the technology from 2020, 2017, 2018. So they had the minions, the grid ions, and then, then they launched the flongles because some people said minion is too expensive. Uh, for a smaller laboratories, then they came up with the smaller ones, which only has 126 channels. The Menion has 512 times 4, <clears throat> so you have 2048. And the Promethean has 3000, so Promethean has a bigger capacity. If you are doing a plant genomics project, de novo sequencing, you are, depending on the size of your uh, uh, samples, uh, how big the genome is, how much coverage, if you want 100 GB to 300 GB kind of coverage, then you have to go with the Promethean. And again, the accuracy has improved a lot since 2017, 2018. Now in 2022, uh, we are already at a very advanced level that the, the, every technology has its own uh, you know, product development life cycle. And uh, it's already at a very, very advanced stage. I'm not sure how much more uh, new things they can introduce. They already introduced so much new things. Uh, this is at, at, at the pinnacle of, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's everything that we have hoped for. And um, it, earlier it was called R9.4, now it's 10.4. The R10 series has clearly, clearly have a huge, huge performance update. How? Because mainly you can see in this graph, so you have this uh, different, uh, the basis per second BPS. Uh, you know, so it used to be 520, then 400, then 216. So the slower it goes, uh, the more accuracy the software is able to recognize. So basically, it is artificial intelligence uh, running behind the scenes. So we used to have AlbaCore in the beginning, then we have Guppy. So today, Guppy, there are different versions. Uh, so always use the always check the version. We install the latest Guppy when you analyze the data, and uh, we highly recommend the Minion MK1C, which comes with a screen. It has an onboard GPU and one terabyte storage. Uh, the regular Minions they have a temperature problem. If you keep it in a normal room, I had this uh, problem. Uh, we we have like five six Minions lying around in the lab, uh, so there's too much uh, heat uh, creates a problem, especially in India. <clears throat> so I recommend go with the Minion MK1C. Uh, which is uh, same similar costing, no big difference. Uh, plus, you have the advantage of a very good thermostat. Uh, it controls the temperature very well. Uh, the minions, the standalone minions, don't have that option. Uh, then, if you want, if you have the budget, go for a grid. Right? So that's uh, something. And now, the the good news is it's backwards compatible. So if you have the older R9 Pro cells, where accuracy is not an issue for your data, you can still work with that. And uh, they are also forwards compatible. So you can basically use any kind of Pro cells. And the different ways to run on the Prometheon, so you can run uh, single samples, you can run, you don't have to, if you have a P24 or a P48, no need to put all 24 at the same time, you can just run a two or three Promethean flow cells at a time, you have a lot of flexibility, uh, especially if you're doing human genome, we recommend minimum like two or three, maybe up to five, five is a lot, uh, but two to three is fine, people have done very promising, you know, like for, here you can see Matt Lewis has you know, more than 170 GB uh, as data has been generated from the new kit 14, uh, which is currently running at 400 BPS, right? So, so the new kit 14 chemistry, the kit 12 came, then the kit 14 has come. Uh, so it's an early access. So the existing current users can get access to this. 
people who are interested in the, in the accuracy. <coughs> And uh, they've done a lot of improvements on the motor, on the motor adapters, and also the chemistry. That's what's happening in the, in the kit footing. So this is currently now available. Many are, so initially they launch, they'll say it is early access, but after wait for a couple of months, it will be available in the regular store. So I highly recommend, if you're looking for accuracy, go for kit footing. If you're looking at structural variants and log, large chromosomal kind of things, or metagenomics, but you don't need kit footing, you can go with the kit 12 or the older kits also, not a problem. <clears throat> The more interesting part here is uh, if you have the grid ion or Promethean, the bigger instruments. Now I have a like a like a tuning. I can I can increase the speed. I can decrease the speed. How fast the DNA is being threaded? This is not possible in any other technology. You only see this in in nanopore, and I can literally control uh, the accuracy. The sim here they have shown the data for simplex accuracy and the duplex accuracy. So it's a tunable run settings. You know, this never. This is like you know like like a science fiction. Like a dream come true, you know. <laughs> Depending on the kind of, uh, and then there's, uh, I I forgot to keep one slide. There's another another very interesting feature in Nanopore called adaptive sampling. Today, if you do like Illumina, you know, you everything is amplicons. You need to design primers. You have to make the PCR pro, uh, products. You have to amplify certain regions of the DNA, right? And then you have to sequence it. Uh, but adaptive sequencing is like no need for ampli amplicons. Nothing in the software we program. These are the regions. Let's say I'm working on chromosome eight. Chromosome eight is my interest. I will give the reference uh, genome for chromosome eight uh, as one of the approved file formats. Uh, so I'm doing a home, whole genome project. I'm literally putting an entire whole genome of the human DNA in the sample. But the, when the DNA is being threaded, the software will identify, okay, this does not belong to chromosome eight. It will reject it, it will spit it out. It's called uh, you know adaptive sampling. And when the DNA, the next strand goes inside, it says, oh, this looks like chromosome 8. I'm going to continue sequencing. So I don't need amplicons. Why do you need amplicons? <laughs> Just go with adaptive sampling. The only challenge there is you will not get hundreds of GBs of data because you are, you are getting rid of 90% of the unwanted DNA. You are focusing on the uh, highly focused DNA. But then you are looking at the DNA in the native conformation with the base modifications. You are not uh, changing it. Same, same with RNA, another huge plus point in nanopore is the direct RNA sequence. So there's so many features in Nanopore. Once you start uh, learning about that, then say, man, why are we still doing Illumina <laughs> or, or, or any of the short read technologies? Uh, Nanopore, once you go into Nanopore world, you never come back, <laughs> you know? So again, uh, for a long time, Nanopore used to be just a single reads. So now they're introducing the duplex feature. The kits are not yet available. It's coming soon. Uh, so this is how the duplex read works. <clears throat> uh, so basically what it does, it's, it's threads one, one half of the DNA first, but then there's a connector link, and then it goes to the other end. Same like how Illumina works, but they have done some modifications in that to avoid the IP infringement with the Illumina. And now we have this uh, three major uh, pores. So we have three major flow cells. So we have the R9 series, we have the R10 series, and then the new, new Rx series, the R11, 12, like that, something will come in the, in the new series. Currently, the R9s and R10s are available, 9.4.1 and 10.4.1. We have completely stopped using nine series. We are now using the 10.4.1. This is giving very good accuracy for us. And we are able to get, uh, you know, like a complete whole genome coverage uh, at a 3x to 30x. And adaptive sampling of those 500 genes, something like foundation medicine or garden health, the comprehensive genomics. There are 500 genes which are important in, in cancer. So we are doing adaptive sampling for those 500 genes we focus on that. And this is some, some data they presented about homopolymer accuracy. It's very nice. And also, you know, like the raw read accuracy, theoretical maximum output in 72 hours, how much you can generate, you know. And then where are, where are we now? So we are now with Ramora. So Ramora is the latest for the methylation. And here are some, some examples. You can see the precision and accuracy. Uh, it's already, it's giving the best bang for your buck compared to bisulfate sequencing. So if you are into methylation, uh, nanopore is the best option for you right now. You know, you can do both genomics and epigenomics. I think that's the last slide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we'll take questions now. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Shibi, for this wonderful uh, overview and understanding of the nanopore technology. And uh, there is also there was also a comparison. So uh, for, for our users and viewers, uh, I think... Uh, 
uh, many of our users and viewers uh, have been uh, students and faculty and uh, mm -hmm. for students i think um, uh, one of the things that have been uh, a, a gap or perhaps many of the biotechnologists and biochemistry students uh, would want to know much about uh, how the data is generated so i'm just summarizing yes. that this has been really helpful for those who would want to know how the data is generated and what is the industry standards because many times uh, especially with faculties who are also working and want to uh, conduct experiments are kind of outsourcing this to the industry this uh, sequencing work to the industry and uh, then they are getting reports and uh, then they are learning about uh, what is the possible insights that they can gain from the data however like uh, having an in-depth understanding from this session is going to be very much helpful in designing the experiments and even like before designing uh, hypothesizing the experiments so thank you so much dr kanan for this uh, insightful talk and yes. uh, we started from clinical informatics by dr jeet sarkar and then we learned about how the data is being generated and then uh, what we want to uh, know also there are some questions so let me read that out to you uh, yeah. so keeping uh, so one question that i'll read now is keeping some of the limitations of nanopore technology in mind in your perspective what are some of the ways the technology can be further improved in the future so where do you see that uh, the future with nanopore technology how they can evolve further from this yes yes so like i said the base calling algorithm can keep on improving so what the, one of the huge advantages in nanopore is uh, we have done some some sequencing way back in 2018 that raw data is still lying around every time they release a new version of guppy and, and the new version of uh, all this software made a car more on everything i can go back and reanalyze the raw data i get i can retrieve more information so that's the that's the beauty of nanopore uh, because the base calling algorithm is improving it runs on artificial intelligence behind the scenes the more training data set you use to train this algorithm the better it becomes right it also opens up the possibility. Let's say you are working on a very unique kind of project, which nobody has done. Everybody is working on model organisms. Let's say you are an organism. Let's say you are a diabetes professional working on Gila monster. We don't have a reference genome you know, for Gila monster or the Komodo dragon, for example, right? But the saliva has the, the diabetes treatment. So you're working on that. You don't have a reference genome. You know, so you're completely doing something from out of the scratch. So take monkeypox, for example, right? And nobody has built a monkeypox reference genome. You know. And you are the first guy doing it. So then you can basically train your own uh, algorithm. So the software gives you that, uh, that ability uh, to train based on your own training data set. So you have like uh, gigabytes of data lying around in your, in your software database, in your hard disk. You can train it and uh, you can customize it, especially on the, I highly recommend this one talk from one of the Nanopore team members. Uh, they talk about uh, how to customize uh, Albacore or Guppy or Remora for your, your particular lab scenario. And I also highly recommend uh, AP2Me Labs. Uh, this is a tutorial website, so they have plenty of uh, tutorials. And uh, you can see uh, they have different, different uh, versions also released. And they have so one if you for can you. also share this on in the chat. So there was a question. Next question was yes. to like a full guide or these tutorials, I think. This is if the place. Can... Yeah. So all students go to labs.apitome.io and uh, you have plenty of tutorials. You know, let me let me click on one of them. And uh, you can see the first start with the installation, right? So you need to install Docker uh, to access the server. So you can just install it on your desktop and then start with the basic step like introduction to FastQ, the VCF file if you're interested in variant calling, the BAM file, FOSPI. Do the basic QC tutorial. Start with this. And then here you have uh, adaptive sampling. And if you are into plan genomics, do the assembly. Highly recommend you do the metagenomics, the epitome sequencing uh, 16S analysis. Uh, also, they have other, other examples also. For example, if you're in COVID virology, highly recommend the SARS CoE2 analysis. Uh, so let me just open it quickly. I'll show you. So basically, if you're familiar with Jupyter notebooks, uh, so this is how it looks. So right now it's a static uh, page. But once you connect Docker and you have the epitome labs up and running, uh, I can click on any of these code chunks and hit enter, that code will run. So now it's just a static HTML page. So here we'll have like uh, instructions followed by chunk of code. So it's very easy to follow these tutorials, especially if you're new to working in uh, command line. Uh, so Jupyter Notebooks, if you, are, if you are into bioinformatics, 
you need to know jupyter notebooks <laughs> that's something i recommend everybody get familiar with working with jupyter notebooks yeah thank you thank you so much dr kanan and uh, i'm just looking at the website i'll share it with our audience and uh, i think uh, we are out of running out of time and thank you so much for your participation in this keynote session